What's up everyone? This is Tyler here with Savvy Hut Tutorials. Today I will be following up on an FL Studio 11 tutorial I created last week and sort of elaborating on a few additional features that you have been having questions about. Keep in mind before I even play this song that I'm not trying to do it for the overall beat. I'm not trying to make it sound incredibly awesome, but I am trying to find features that may be a bit tricky if you're just diving into FL Studio. So without further ado, I'll go ahead and play what the end product will sound like. All right, let's get this tutorial started. Last week we created this simple beat right here, which uh, involves just a simple hip kick, hip hat, hip snap, and hip snare. This week we'll be taking that one step further and creating what I just showed you. Believe it or not, the only instrument we will add is called Grand Piano, and I'll show you exactly where that is right now. It's in the, if you go to packs on the left hand side of your screen, you'll see instruments and then you'll see the word keyboard. Go ahead and left click on that and you'll see the word grand piano. So go ahead and left click, hold that down, drag it over right below the hip snare. For this particular tutorial, we will not mess with any of this for now. Um, what we will do is add some effects on our grand piano. If you go ahead and left click on that, you'll see that this box will pop up called channel settings. Right now it shows the pan, volume, pitch all at the top. Again, we won't even mess with that this tutorial. But what I do want to check out is the FX section located on the top right hand corner. And double click that. You'll see this up and down arrow will appear when you hover over it. Double click it and this box will pop up. It's called the Mixer Master. This is going to show all the different channels that you've created in your mixer. You can put different effects on each one. And the first thing you'll remember is we did everything on pattern one in the previous tutorial. Add that to our track one. And again, if you hover over it, you'll see this paintbrush. Left click, hold it down. You'll see, you know, pattern clip sources. Go ahead and left click pattern one. Should be the only thing that you have to choose from so far. So left click on that, hover over it, and scroll it across. The next thing we'll do is scroll up to pattern two. Now, if you're on the step sequencer, which is up here in the top corner flashing right now, left click on that, you'll see it's completely blank. So if you try to play the pattern, which right now the red dot symbolizes it will only play the pattern, whereas the green symbolizes it will play the entire song. When it plays the entire song, it's going to put together track one, two, three, four, whatever different instruments you have, put them all together and play it all at one time. For now, we'll just keep it on pattern. It should play absolutely nothing when you click play when it's on pattern two. Why? Because we have nothing on there. Pattern one, we have the beat, the basic beat we created in the last tutorial. So on pattern two, we'll go down to our grand piano, right click, and then left click on the button that says piano roll at the top of that. And another thing people asked about was why my buttons, I guess, look differently as far as the length. These are actually 16th notes. So each black bar represents an entire quarter note of the four. So one, two, three, there's a full quarter note. One, two, three, there's another full quarter note. The easiest way to zoom out is go up here to where you see the double arrow thing. Left click, drag it to the right. You'll see the entire thing uh, get smaller. If you'll notice at the top here, there's a one. That's the beginning of the first measure. There's a two, the second measure, three, third measure, and so on. In order to create four quarter notes in the first measure, what you would do is just simply click here, 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 and here. So it's going to go dun, 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 dun within the, the beats of the measure. So and if you were to put that on the track, go up here to view playlist, left click, and you'll see it's uh, zoomed in very, very close right now to zoom right back out. Do the same thing we just did on the piano roll. Hold your mouse to where it says these double arrows, left click, hold it down and drag it over. So now you can see the same exact thing. Here's the beginning of measure one. Here's the beginning of measure two, three. So here's what it's like if you play the entire song together. So it's gonna bring in that first pattern one and pattern two, play them at the same time. Left click on song and click play. 
The next thing we'll do is go back into our piano roll and create the beat that I had at the beginning of this tutorial. There are a few ways to test the notes before you actually put them here in the pattern. One is to go over here to the left and click on the different keys where it looks like a little keyboard. So just left click. And you can also do it while you're moving the key or the note here on the pattern. Another way, if you don't have a full size keyboard, you can actually use some of the parts of the piano on your computer keyboard. For example, the P button will give me E6, the I button will give me C6, and the Y button will give me A5. So if you push all three together, you'll get the first sound that I used in the song. So I'll go ahead and erase that. So what I'll do to put down the different notes is make sure I have my draw tool up here, which is the little picture of a pencil. And I will simply left click into the notes that I know I want and make sure they're all aligned here to the far left. If you haven't changed any of your settings, everything should be snapping. And I'll get into other tutorials about how to adjust where they snap. You can do it to where it doesn't snap at all and you can slide it anywhere on the pattern. And there's a bunch of different options. I won't get into it, but I will show you if for some reason you accidentally click none and you can't figure out why your note isn't getting exactly on beat. It's because you need to go up and check to make sure that your snap is set to main. That's the default snap. So it'll automatically line up all your notes. I'll go ahead and fill in the rest of the measure that I have here. So that's one way to do it is to go through and click all of them. Another option is if it's very long and very repetitive and you want to just duplicate it, you can always go up here to the select tool, which is the little dotted line square up at the top left hand corner. If you click on that, you can hover over and select a certain group of notes. And then you just simply do control C for copy. So I will go ahead and hit control V to paste the notes I just copied. And you'll see it puts it over here. They're lit up in red. If you click off of it by accident, like this, for example, it will look like the notes disappeared. But what it actually did, you can go up here to the draw tool, where if you click on that, you can hover over the note it has the four arrows pointing out, left click, hold it down and move it to the right. You'll see it actually pasted it right on top of your other notes which can be what you want it to do. But for this tutorial, that's not what we're aiming for. So if you hold down Control Alt Z, you can back up. So I'm just hitting Z twice, three times, four. And now I'm back to where I was with the red notes being the entire group that I, I pasted. So if you hover over just one of the notes, it can be any of the notes in this group, left click, hold it down. You can move all the notes at once. And all I'm doing is holding left, dragging it to the right, and pasting it right there. All right, so now that we have our first full two measures here in the piano roll, let's go back up to the playlist and make sure that you have it pasted here on track two. If you do, that's good. You can go ahead and click play song to just make sure that everything's sounding the way you had in mind. So let me go ahead and click play. Once you feel like you've gotten the right sound that you're looking for, you can go ahead and double click on the pattern two here, which will bring us directly back into the piano roll. Another thing is while you're in the piano roll, you can actually play the entire song as well. You don't have to be looking at the playlist to do that. So a lot of times if you want to stay in the piano roll, you want to hear, hey, what's the next notes that would sound good after this, you can uh, click play while you're here in the piano roll. And now what I usually do is I'll play around with uh, different notes that may sound good. So. Yeah, that's the next note that I have in line here. So I'll go ahead and put those notes in. And one thing you can do instead of having to play the entire two measures that I created before is go just below this scroll bar that I've been using. Go right below that and you'll see a little finger pop out. What that does, if you left click on it, let's say right here, it'll start the song from that point on right there where I left clicked. So right here, you'll see it starts right there. 
And what I'm using, instead of always going up here to click play, if you just hit the space bar, it will actually start playing the song automatically or the pattern, depending on which one you're on. But uh, let's say I wanted to combine these notes and just hear really quickly. I don't want to keep going through the whole song to hear what I should put next. I want to quickly hear the last few notes to see what the next notes would sound good with. Push space bar. And I would uh, use my keyboard to just hit some notes. They don't have to be on beat. I'm not recording it. I just want to get an idea if the notes will sound good. And for now, for this tutorial, I say, yeah, they're fine. So I'll hold down the P key, the U key, and the T key just to highlight the notes I can put these in. And I will actually go over here, now that I've got this first half done, hit Control C to copy and Control B to paste immediately after the group I just created. So Control V will typically paste it directly on the notes you have highlighted. Control B will put it directly after. Sometimes that's just helpful with organizing the notes instead of them being a jumbled mess. I will go back up here to the draw tool, hover over any of the notes and just drag it into play. The next thing I'll do is drag this over to the next measure and find the next three notes that I have here. I think it's a O for the D6. Seven. If you push the seven, it's just like a, a normal piano, I guess. The white keys are going to be that first top row, and the black keys would be the numbers that you see up top. So the seven is going to hit my sharp key there. So A sharp, and then let's see here. R for F5. I'm just going to go ahead and fill this in. Start right here. So the D6 again, which is the O key. Now I hit Y to drop down one note and the same note here. Final measure here. O, U, and T if you're using a regular keyboard still. Select tool, hover over everything. Control C to copy it all, Control B to paste it. Go up here to my draw tool drag it into place. So let me just hear what that sounds like. To get back to the complete beginning, instead of just starting in the middle here, you hit stop twice. Just click it once and click it twice. So double click that. It'll bring you all the way to the front here. The next thing we'll do is add effects to this particular pattern that we've already created. As I mentioned before, the only instrument we will use this entire tutorial is the grand piano, but we will make all the sounds that we need to produce the final outcome. So the first thing I'll do is go up here to my step sequencer, Let's go ahead and left click that, and you'll see grand piano. If it's not already up on your screen, you can go over the grand piano, left click it, and left click it again, and you'll see all the different options to affect the grand piano. What I'm most interested in right now is the FX section. You'll see that located right here. And right now there's two dashes because there are no effects channels on it yet, or it's not linked to any channels yet. If you double left click on that, you'll see the master mixer pop up here. And this is where you will include all the different effects that you will create on your instrument. So let's go ahead and put Grand Piano on Insert 1. Okay, so now everything I do within Insert 1 will affect this Grand Piano. So I'll go over here to the right-hand side of the mixer. You'll see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Those are going to be where we'll add effects to the Grand Piano. So you'll see this drop-down arrow. Your mouse changes to a pointer hand. Left-click that. And the first thing we'll add is a little bit of reverb. 
So if you hover over select, you'll see a bunch of different options and ways to affect your channel. Scroll down to Fruity Reverb, just the first one. We won't mess with Fruity Reverb 2 for now. Left click and it'll add it to your channel. So once we add Fruity Reverb to the channel, you'll see it pops up another box that we can go in and further edit Fruity Reverb. So let's go ahead and do that and I'll just show you a couple things that it does. So the first thing I'll do is play my song to make sure it's linked. If you'll notice, it isn't, so it'll sound exactly the same. But if you hover over the FX and just scroll up one, you'll see a one pop up. And again, if you scroll all the way up, you'll get different inserts and you can see it going on in your master as well. So I'm on FX channel one and here's the fruity reverb. So now when I play it, it will have a little bit of reverb in it. So you can kind of hear the airy background effect going on. What I'll do as far as changing the sound is increase the reverb to about 40%. And we'll hear what that sounds like. And I'll also increase the room size so it sounds like it's being played in a much larger auditorium or something like that. The next thing we'll do is go down to our next slot. It says number two. There are a couple ways to get to these presets. The first way I showed you is just left clicking the down arrow, seeing the select button, and you see all these different options on the side here. Another way, if you don't know exactly which preset you're looking for, you can kind of categorize it by hovering over and right clicking. You'll see it shows up a, a visual display of all the different uh, effects you can add to this channel. This shows all of them, so if you know you're looking for either an amp or a control or a delay kind of effect or dynamics, different different options, and it actually categorizes everything for you. It gives you more of a visual representation of the different effects that you can add to it. To get out of this, just simply right click or choose one of these different options here. But I will go ahead and right click to get back out. And I will go down to left click, select, and Fruity Panoramic EQ2. Left click that and you'll see a straight bar come across here. So the first thing you'll notice is you can click on these and drag them all different areas. The best way to do this is actually play the song while you're making changes so you can kind of play it by ear. There are presets so if you're doing let's say some kind of a kick it will automatically create a kick for you or a kick sound that seems to work for a lot of different songs and you can go in and adjust this as well but for now we'll keep it at default and I will play the song and make adjustments to make it sound like the original what you do to move these up and down is just simply left click and hold and just drag up or down so let me go ahead and start the song and I will edit this while I'm playing it The next thing we'll do is add a fruity chorus. So go back down to the drop down menu here in our mixer, left click and go to fruity chorus. I actually just left it on the default and I'll also show you how to turn on and off the effect. Right here is the little green button. If you left click that, it'll turn it off and left click again, will turn it back on. But you can do it, it makes more sense if you do it while you're playing the song. So I'll go ahead and left click play. So you can hear what it sounds like before Fruity Chorus was added, and then after. And to try different presets within Fruity Chorus, you'll see that uh, you can hover over and go, there's not too many. Now you can get in and edit this a lot, but another way to try it out is um, just play. And left click these left and right arrows here. You'll see there are a bunch of different options. If you want to get back to default, you'll see up here in the 
right below file edit channels view options it will show you which preset you're using and I will actually go back until it shows me I'm using see when I hover over it it says previous preset and the next one will say next preset so let me click on the left arrow here now I'm in CE chorus preset I'm in 50 detune poly chorus low light filtro fat clean and then default so now I'm back at default and I know that just hovering over it. so the next thing we'll add is a gross beat and just for kicks we'll do it the other way if you right click this icon it'll show you all the different presets and I will hover over until I see the word gross beat and I know this is the gross beat so I will double click on that and you'll see it adds it just the same way that we've added everything else so what I'll add is basic 8 left click that and you'll see it changes the straight green line to a down angle at the very last portion of the measure what that does is takes the note fades it out very quickly and then as soon as the next note starts it'll actually start down where the last note ended and bring it back up that may sound confusing so let me go ahead and play what it sounds like without it and then I'll add it while it's playing now I'll go ahead and add it the next thing we will add is another grand piano so if you go over here left click on that to bring it to the front and I will simply take another grand piano from here left click hold it down drag it right below the second one. So blank space there let go and it'll add the second grand piano next we will scroll up so we're not on pattern 2 anymore we're done with that pattern for now go up here and scroll up to pattern 3 so let's start completely fresh on the third pattern and we'll assign this FX channel to 2 since it's blank so there's one we could make it sound exactly like the last grand piano we created but we don't want to do that we want to scroll up to channel 2 and add a couple effects we will only add two to this pattern so first we'll add gross beat we'll right click go down to the gross beat double click as it in here and we will for this we're gonna make the almost police siren sound that I had where it's like dun dun woo, whatever it may not sound that great I get it but for the purpose of this tutorial I wanted to dive into something very simple yet more customized so I'm gonna stay on empty empty and modify this completely by hand instead of doing a preset if you go to the center of the line and right click a dot will pop up and what that does is kind of give us an anchor point so we're not pulling the entire line down and I'll take this far right you'll see a little hand will pop up once you hover over it and I'll just bring it down to the next line here so it says negative one so you'll see it's just created a 90 degree angle to make that more of a police siren sound we need to make more of a concave curve so if you right click on the dot here when we just drag down you'll see it gives you a couple different options what we want for this tutorial is single curve so left click on that it'll give you a straight line down but in the center of that line there's a hollow circle hover over that and you'll see an up and down arrow appear drag it down to about there now before I play the song I want to make sure that none of my other patterns are affected by what I'm doing right now and actually I just noticed if you go up here to the pattern left click bring up you'll see that the hip kick hip hat hip snap hip snare we haven't edited those at all we just added them in but by default it gave them a channel each of them gave their separate channel so hip kick which is the first instrument I added gave it FX channel of one hip hat was two three four that wasn't something I told it to do it's not bad that it does it but you want to make sure that the effects you're creating on your other instruments and different patterns don't affect previous instruments so for now I'm going to reset these all back to the the double dash which is basically no effect there next I will go back to pattern 3 where we were editing our grand piano number 2 and as you see it's assigned to FX channel 2 which we added that gross beat let's first dive into the piano roll so right click on grand piano number two go into the piano roll and let's add some notes you will notice it zoomed me in quite a bit so in order to zoom back out I'm just gonna hover over this 
and fly out to about there so I can see a little bit more of the space I have. And I will actually scroll up a little bit. This is a, a higher note to E7. I'm actually going to zoom out a bit more. All right, perfect. So I will add two half notes. Make sure you're on the draw tool. Left click. Hover over it to where it shows this double arrow. Hold left click down and drag it over to create the first half note. And then simply left click again. It will produce whatever note length that you created last. So now it will always do the half notes for as long as I do that. If I edit this a little bit, the next note I click will be a quarter note. See? So that's how that works. So let's hear what that sounds like just as a pattern. So make sure you're on the, the red dot for PAT for pattern. Left click. The next thing I'll do is add it to the pattern. So go back up to playlist here, left click, and just left click again. It'll add it in there just like that. So we can play the whole song just to see what this sounds like so far all together. The next thing I'll add to my Grand Piano 2 is a fruity reverb. So left click the down arrow. Go down to where you see Fruity Reverb. Left click on that. The only thing I'll change to this, because we already talked about Reverb, is increase it a bit to about 40%. And let's hear what that sounds like. It makes it sound just a bit distant, which is kind of what I'm going for. The final instrument we'll add is on Pattern 4. So let's left click on our Sequencer. Now we're on pattern three. Let's scroll up to pattern four. Another way to do that is just see the drop down menu. We've only created three patterns, so that's all that will show up. Now we will create that fourth pattern and we will add in one more grand piano. So left click, drag that in. Left click on it to open the effects. Double click on FX and scroll up so it's on a channel we haven't used yet, which in this case is FX channel three. You'll see it's completely blank. What we will add again is going to be the gross beat. So right click, go down to gross beat, double click on that. And before we even begin diving into this, let's copy the same notes we used in pattern three. So I'm going to scroll back down, hover over the grand piano number two, right click that and hit edit, hover over it, copy. Now let's scroll back up to pattern four, down to piano number three that we've got here, right click, edit paste so it pasted the exact two notes that we just created in pattern three this can be very useful if you have a very long pattern that you created but you want to reproduce the same exact pattern just maybe a different sound or a different instrument to come behind it so what we'll do next is go over to our gross beat and i'll go up here to pattern so i'm only focusing on the two notes we just created i'll click play So in addition to the presets you see when you first get into gross beat, there are a number of other ones. And the one I want to show you where I got that sound is called turntable. Hover over the right arrow key here and just left click. You'll see up top it says default. It went away obviously because I'm not hovering over it right now. But when you hover over it, um, it'll show next preset. I'm on default right now. I click again and now I'm in flanging presets and I'll explain what that is on a different tutorial and momentary patterns pitch shifters stutters and turntablists so this is a category of different turntablist sound effects that you can quickly add to your instruments what i will add to my piano roll is simply the scrap pattern 10. so let me click on that and you'll see it creates everything for me instantly which is kind of nice. Let me go ahead and play that in the pattern. So it's just kind of a, a sound that you put at the end or mix it into your song, anything like that. They all sound like different turntable scratches within this certain set of presets. So what I will do now is add it to our playlist. Make sure you're on the draw tool, left click, and it's going to add pattern four in there. So let's go up here, make sure we're playing the whole song. Left click, got the green dot on, and let's play that. Let 
The final thing I did was use the slice tool. It looks like a little box cutter in order to get rid of some of the notes in here that I don't want to play for whatever reason. So I'll go up here to my slice tool, left click to select it. So right here I will go and hold the left click mouse button and simply drag it up. What that did was it made a slice. It didn't affect anything in the piano roll, but it did affect it on the playlist here. So it sliced up the, the first sequence of pattern one and pattern two. The next thing I want to do is simply slice right up on the other side of that. So it lines up with where the first pattern one ends. So you'll see I've got now pattern one, pattern one, pattern two, pattern two. It'll actually sound exactly the same. I'll click play. But what this lets you do is now go up to the draw tool and you can delete these patterns to make it just stop for a second. It doesn't affect anything else but what's going on here in the playlist. So let me hear what that sounds like. All right, and once you do slice those up, don't worry, you can always bring it back in by hovering over the far left slice that you created and drag it back in. For this tutorial, I added back in that last snap snare, so it sounds more like this. So next I'll go through and slice up the rest of this by clicking the slice tool, dragging it up, slicing here, and slicing here, deleting these two. Either the draw tool or the paintbrush for this will do the same thing. Hover over it, brings it back in, slice, 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 slice. Draw tool, delete, 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 delete. Hover over it, drag it to the right by holding left click down, drag it to the right by holding left click down. Let's hear what that sounds like. And that's it. And this concludes the tutorial. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. Subscribe and check out other Savvy Hut tutorials coming soon. Thanks guys. Bye. be creating in the end and quickly go through create it explain what I'm doing and how you can create the same effect all right here it goes <laughs>